All right, grab your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And we are going to wrap this particular book up. This is Paul's swan song. Uh, he is finishing up. This is the last uh, letter he writes. Uh, we know he is fixing to go to heaven. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be executed by the the uh, by Nero and 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 beheaded. But he's ready to go. When you have to go, it's always good to be ready. Amen. Uh, the Bible says it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. This is one thing we're not going to avoid. We're not going to we're not going to be one minute late. We're not going to be one minute early. We're going to be at that place and we can't avoid it, but we can be ready. Say amen. amen. All right. Second Timothy, chapter number four in verse number one. If you're there, say amen. amen. I charge thee, therefore, now let us do this. Let's do this. I know it's not probably not up here, uh, but let's go back. Let's go back to chapter three and look at verse number 14. Let's start there. Because uh, in verse number one, it says, I charge thee, what's that word? Therefore. therefore. And when you see the word therefore, you go back and read the verses before so you know why it's. Therefore. All right. Does that make sense? So let's do that. Let's do that. Because when you do that, when you read verse one, it's going to pop. OK, because the verses before that talk about the scriptures, talk all completely about the scriptures. And then he comes and pals and says, preach the word. He tells them what the scriptures are, what the scriptures has the power to do. You remember last week we said the scriptures will tell you what's right. The scriptures will tell you what's wrong. The scriptures will tell you how to get right. And the scriptures will tell you how to stay right. Right. Well, when you know that and then you go into verse number one, verse number two, and he says, preach the word. Now you know why. Does that make sense? All right. Now let's look at verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Everybody, come on now. We, we're lacking in here. I know we, we got some of us are scared off for COVID, but that's all right. That's all right. So we got to be a little louder, make up for those that's not here. Okay. All scripture. scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Verse 16 Verse 16 tells you what the scripture is good for, right? What's right, what's wrong, how to get right, how to stay right. All of those go together. Now watch, now watch. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What does he have to be complete and furnished? What does furnished mean? It has everything you need. When you go into a furnished house, it means you have what you need. It has a couch, it has a chair, it has a refrigerator, it has a stove. Whatever you need to live, it's got it. And what he's saying here, whatever the man of God or the woman of God needs to do to accomplish God's will in their life, you have it when you have the, the scriptures. Somebody say amen. amen. You got everything you need with that book that's in your hand. Do you understand now why that book is so important? Yes. Now watch what he says. Verse one, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom Preach the word. preach the word, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itch and ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. appearing. Now watch him get personal. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. In other words, he's saying, man, Timothy, hurry up. Hurry up and come see me. For Demas hath forsaken me, 
having loved this present world and has departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens is to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus, I practice that 20 minutes today. Amen. <laughs> Tychicus, like a tick on a dog. Amen. Right. Tychicus. I, I, I listened to it. I got it where the Bible will repeat and read back to me. And I'm telling you, I, it, that was hard for me. Amen. He said, I have sent thee to Ephesus. Now he is going to replace Timothy. He's going to fill in with Timothy for Timothy there at Ephesus. So Timothy could come see him. If that makes sense, say amen. All right. Now watch what he says. The cloak that I left with thee at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee. Now what's that mean? He's cold. He's elderly. He's in a hole. Remember the, remember the maritime prison that we talked about. He said, man, bring my coat. Bring my coat. Bring it with thee. But especially the books and the parchments. Parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom... Be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Somebody say amen. amen. Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me. What does that mean? If everybody walks out on you. Do you hear me? If everybody walks out on you. Listen, he'll be walking in while they're walking out. Amen. That's enough preach right there for us to go home with. Amen. But we ain't. Amen. We got some more to go. Amen. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. That's that roaring lion, Satan. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now he salutes all his friends and we'll talk about that again, but I'm going to pray so y'all can sit down. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your blessings and your mercy. Thank you for the, Lord, the sweet spirit I already feel in here. Lord, I, I know, I know we've got, we've got so many problems in our world, so many problems in our country. Uh, Lord, and, and, and things are in chaos, they're in a mess. There's a, Lord, this virus and the pandemic and the sickness and all these things going on. But I am so glad to know, I am so glad to know when there's chaos in all the world, everything's all right in the Father's house. Lord, you are still in charge. You are still in control. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And God, I pray that you'll get the glory out of this service. Lord, I pray that you'll edify your children tonight. Let us learn and grow and, and enjoy each other's presence underneath the, the teaching and preaching of your word. And God will thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You, <clears throat> let me grab a sip real quick. All right. Let's go back to verse one. <clears throat> now, now, does everybody does everybody understand <clears throat> and get why I said to uh, uh, to go back and read those verses before? Does everybody see the, the significance of that? And how important that is. Uh, because he's talking about the scriptures, how important it is. He said, remember what you were taught from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. And then he says what the scriptures have the ability to do, the content of the scriptures and, and what they have. And then he comes right back. He comes right back and gives him his main purpose and responsibility. And that is to preach the word. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want to do this. I want to look at verse one. Verse one is huge and it's not really in your notes. It, it kind of is. It kind of is in, in point uh, sub point a, uh, but I didn't I didn't really uh, put a lot of stuff under it. But I want you to understand the significance of it. Uh, if you if you're writing down, if you're writing down notes, write this down. Number one, I want you to see the responsibility, the responsibility he gives to Timothy. <clears throat> the responsibility and two things under that, two things under that. And this is the first one. I want you to see the motivation to accomplish this responsibility. What's going what's to motivate him to fulfill this responsibility? It, it, is, it is huge. 
because he goes ahead and says it again. Uh, he's talking about it throughout the, throughout the chapter. He's talking about the Lord's coming. Look what it says in verse number one. Look what it says in verse number one. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Now the word quick, you remember, when we, we use the word quick, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Quick means alive. Say that with me. It means all right. Uh, you have the quick of your fingernail. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, clip into it one time. And then you're going to learn that it's alive. <laughs> Amen. It's alive. That's what it's talking about. It's quick. It means living. He's going to judge the living and the dead. There's going to be people that go before us and there's going to be people alive when he returns. But the point is, he's going to judge us all. He's going to judge us all who shall judge the quick and the dead. What, what, what Paul is trying to do here, he's trying to show Timothy how serious this is that he's dealing with. This topic and this, this situation in this letter, his responsibility to preach the word, how, how important it is and how serious it is because Jesus is coming back. There'd be times when me and my brother would, would goof off and cut up and, and, and get a little rambunctious at home and, 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 and we, we would kind of get out of bounds a little bit. And my mom would say this. My mom would say this and it would work every time. Your father is coming home. Do I have a witness? And those were the only words that was necessary. Nothing else had to be done. Nothing else had to be said. All she had to do was say, your father is coming home. And you know what I think we as Christians need to understand and we need to remember? Jesus is coming. He is coming. He has tarried his coming, but he is still coming. Scoffers have said, where is the promise of his coming? I promise you this. It has been delayed, but it will not be denied. The Lord is coming. And when he comes, there's going to be a judgment. There's going to be a judgment. I, I, I see people who, who think they're being spiritual, I guess. I don't know that that will live a certain lifestyle or live a certain way. And, and they don't want nobody saying anything about their behavior, about their lifestyle, about their lifestyle choices. And they'll say, God is my only judge. Do they know he's going to? That should not put you at ease. That should scare you to death. And Paul is saying, God will judge. And in this chapter, he calls him the righteous judge. The righteous judge. And why would he say that? Why would, why would, why would Paul, because we know God is holy, right? There's four beasts around the throne crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's, that's the point of why he said what he said. I think it's this. How many times has Paul already been before a judge? He's had all these trials and guess what? All the trials were ripoffs. All the trials and all the judges, some wanted bribes, some wanted to please other people. So they kept him in prison. And every time he was before a judge, they were crooked. But Paul had say, hey, man, Mr. Mr. McKelvey, all of them were crooked. But he's saying one day he's going to stand before a righteous one. He's going to stand before a judge that is right and that will do the right thing. And he said, I can't wait to see his appearing. And one of the greatest motivations, one of the greatest motivations for the Apostle Paul was that the Lord was coming back and he was looking for his return. Amen. So when we when we discuss the responsibility, he wanted to make sure he wanted to make sure that Timothy stayed motivated. And that motivation was the return of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, not just his return, but that one day he would stand before him and he would judge his works. Now, let me clarify that. It's not in your notes, but I feel like I need to say this just in case somebody's confused right here. OK, um, if you are a born again child of God. What will be judged in your case is the works you do from the moment you're saved. Okay, there's two judgments. There's the great white throne judgment, which we find in the end of Revelation. I think it's Revelation 20. I think in Revelation 19 or Revelation 20, somebody can look that up. I think it's 20. 
But that's the great white throne judgment. It said, and I beheld a great white throne and him that sat before it, whose face the heaven and earth fled away. The great, right? The, 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 the rich and the poor all stood before this judgment. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And they were judged out of the things which were written in the books. And those whose names was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, that's the judgment of the lost. But the judgment for the saved, it's called the judgment seat of Christ. So you have the judgment seat of Christ for the saved folk. And you have the great white throne judgment for the lost folk. Are you with me? Say amen. The judgment seat of Christ is called the Bema judgment. B-E-M-A. Say that with me. Okay. <laughs> Bema. B-E-M-A. All right. Which means platform. Platform. How many of y'all have ever watched the Olympics? Watch the Olympics. All right. And, and, and you have the gold medal, the silver medal, and, and the bronze medal, right? And, and what do they do? They get up on a platform and they let them let them put the gold medal around their neck right that's what it's referring to that's what it's referring to so it kind of implies can you imagine this every saved child of God one day is going to step up on a platform before Jesus now now we can look at that one or two ways yeehaw or oh me because if you don't do a blessed thing for Jesus from the moment you're saved or if you do a lot of religious stuff for the wrong motivation, you're going to see all these things that you think you're going to get credit for and rewards for and they're going to go through the fire. And the Bible says there wood, hay and stuff. This ain't even in the notes. I'm just rolling with it. So y'all just whatever. We'll fill it in next week. Wood, hay and stubble. But if you come after you're saved and the works that you do, the service that you offer the Lord is because you want him to get the glory and you want him to get the credit. Not so somebody can pat you on the back and brag on you and say, oh, look what so and so did. Listen, that's that's gold, silver, precious stones. And, and the Bible says that Jesus is going to reward you according to your works. Well, what about sin? Good question. You see, that's going to be judged at the great white throne judgment. You see, a sinner who rejects Christ, when they reject Christ, they reject the offer of the payment for sin. Because Jesus is the only payment for sin. He's the only cure for sin. Are y'all with me? And if they reject his payment, his pardon, then they have to pay for it. Y'all with me? And so they're going to be judged according to their sins. Well, why are we not judged according to our sins? He already was judged on the cross. He was already judged on the cross. For every sin you ever committed, you ever think about committing, or you ever will commit, you've been forgiven. Imagine that. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to serve him. Do you remember, you remember, you remember in Revelation chapter four, chapter four, there are 24 elders around the throne. Y'all remember that? 24 elders around the throne on little thrones around the throne. 24. If any of you math scholars are in here, that's 12 plus 12 every day, unless it's that other kind of math. What do they call that kind of math? Common core. Common core. Yeah, I don't know what. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament saints represented, New Testament saints represented. You, you see both, you see both in the, I don't know where none of this is coming from. I'm just going with it. I'm, it's just coming to me. Amen. You see both the apostles named in heaven and then the 12 patriarchs where in the gates and in the, in the foundations, 
So you have representation from Old Testament saints and New Testament saints. The 24 elders with their crowns, their little crowns, are around the throne. Uh, if you will remember that the priest had orders. There were tons and tons of priests that would serve in the temple, but they didn't serve all at the same time. They each took a turn. They had turns, their order. You remember with Zacharias. You remember when Zacharias, it was his time. It was his turn that he was serving when the angel Gabriel came to him and announced the, the birth of John Baptist and, and Jesus. Are y'all with me? And so I believe that that's a representation of saints reigning with Jesus on those thrones. But what happens? What happens in Revelation? The Bible says they take their crowns and they place them at his feet. They offer him the rewards they receive. And you're saying, what does this got to do with us? Do you want to stand before him empty handed? You know why Paul was proud to get a crown of righteousness? Not so he could wear it around heaven and say, check this out. Because he's going to be able to. I know some of y'all are looking at me funny. Let's turn to Revelation. You don't believe me. Turn to Revelation. That'd be in the back. All right. Revelation chapter four. Revelation chapter four. All right, now look in verse 10. Verse four is where you find the elders seated. Clothed in white raiment and they had on their head crowns of gold. All right, now watch this. Verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship, worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their, crowns the throne. cast their crowns before the throne. In a, in a time of worship, they give back what they have received. Why? Because he's worthy. <laughs> Isn't that what that next verse says? Yes. They cry. He's worthy. Thou art worthy for thou hast created all things and all things were created for thy pleasure. They are and were created. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. He's coming. Paul said, I'm going to charge you and I'm telling you this is important. This is serious. And his motivation was the return of Jesus and the judgment that's going to take place one day. Like I said, it's either yee-haw or oh me. We don't need to live like an idiot and, and, and do foolish things because we're going to be judged. We don't want to lose. We don't want to lose our rewards. Are y'all with me? I'm not saying you're going to be judged by sin, but listen, the more foolish we behave and we don't accomplish what he wants us to accomplish, the less rewards we're going to receive and we're going to stand there empty handed. And we need to serve him. In sincerity and in truth, we need to have a right motivation. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, that's enough. Let's go. Well, that was a big rabbit. Say amen. We see the responsibility in his motivation to accomplish this responsibility in verse number one. But then verse number two, verse number two, he says, I charge thee. This is a military term, by the way. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. That's his mission. Write that word down. That's his mission. That's his purpose. That's what he was here to do. Preach the word. And three things I want you to see underneath that. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right. He said, I want you to preach. I want you to preach. Now, now the word preach here means proclaim. It means a, a king's herald. Now, some of y'all, this would, this would, 
if you're old enough, you'll get this. Some of you younger people ain't going to get this, but uh, how many of y'all could, could understand it? Hear ye, hear ye. Y'all with me? Y'all seen enough movies, you know, musketeer movies. A, a, a proclaimer, a herald would go into the villages and go into the cities and, and say, hear ye, hear ye. And then, and then he would say whatever the king's message was for them to hear. Does that make sense? He would go into a place and with loud voice and expression and express the message and tell them the message of the king. He never gave his opinion. He never gave what he thought. He never decided what he wanted them to hear. He only gave them what the king said. And that's what preaching is. Preaching is not motivational speaking. Not real preaching anyway. But I'm afraid there's too much psychology mixed in with a lot of modern day preachers. We don't need to give our opinions. We don't need to give our preferences. We don't need to give what we think. We need to say this is what the king says. That's what preaching is. Preach the word. And I, I'm going to say this too. I'm going to say this. Now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I am the type. I love an energetic preacher. I love somebody with a pulse. Are y'all with me? I mean, I want this dude to look like he believes what he's saying. Are y'all with me? I mean, I, I grew up, I was raised on preachers that, man, they were sweating in the introduction. And by the time they was through with the sermon, they was half dressed. And they looked like they was fighting bumblebees the whole sermon. Amen. Wild eyed going at. But do you realize you can get hung up on the preach and then you can have the word. I don't think that's the deal. I don't think we should be so overly dramatic that we drowned out in the, in the delivery, the content of the message. And some of y'all, thank God you don't know what I'm talking about. But I've been to some services and it was so loud and it was so dramatic and it was so everything and it was so empty. But everybody was just all excited about the way he was saying nothing. I mean, if you're going to say something, say something. I would rather somebody be monotone and tell me something than somebody all expressive. Now, if you can get them two together, I'm in. I like that. I want somebody to keep me awake. Amen. But he said, preach the word. You cannot emphasize the preach part and, 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 and minimize, there you go, minimize the word. If you minimize anything, minimize the delivery, not the content. Brother Travis, do I have a witness right there? Preach the word. Now watch what he says. Be instant. Y'all just read it. Say it with me. B. Okay, that's the win. That, that's your point. Write it down. Okay, write it down. You're a little sluggish there, Miss Diane. Come on, get with it. That's the win. And, and this, is, this is what I want to say there. Uh, when I was growing up, when I was growing up as a kid, I would always hear, you know, preachers have their own language. You know, talking preacher to preacher, you know, they, they all have, you know, every, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. You know, you're, you're, every preacher, you're taught from a, a, a young age, and Brother Travis, he can, he can say a man to this. They'd always tell you, always have a little outline stuck in there somewhere. Because you never know, you never know when you're going to be called on to preach. And so every preacher, it doesn't matter whether you're going to a revival or going to a camp meeting, but I, I guarantee you if there's 10 preachers in there, they got 10 little outlines stuck back there just in case, just in case. Amen, Travis? Just in case you're called on, something happened. And I mean, that's happened. That's happened uh, uh, where the preacher was sick and couldn't make the revival. So say, hey, brothers, you come. And, 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 but that's not what that's talking about. But that's the way I was always, you know, it was always shown to me. Be instant in season, out of season. That means at the drop of a hat, you need to be ready to preach. Well, that's not what that's talking about. In season means it's convenient. Means it's easy. 
There are times, there are times, and if you're not a preacher, this is going to be hard to, to get. I hope, I hope it's not. I hope I can explain it in a way you, 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 that it will make sense. But there are times when preaching is really easy. It, it really, the atmosphere is charged. It's exciting. Uh, the people want to hear what you have to say. You know, most of the people out there has got this look on their face. But then you go to some places that's drier and cracker dust and everybody's mad at their brother and they don't even want to be there. They'd rather be at home watching the game. And you're up there trying to deliver the word and they're looking at you like. <laughs> Travis, you ought to be shouting right now just to the top of your lung. Am I right? I've been to places. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. And, and, and the more God blesses your ministry, the more other people see it and they want to invite you to come. And they think they think that I can just put all this in a Ziploc bag and put it in my pocket and open it up when I get to their building. <laughs> there are times I want to pack up the whole choir. All right. If I got to go, you got to go. And all y'all, the ameners, y'all got to come with me. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying this. Paul didn't just preach when it was easy preaching. Paul didn't just preach when everybody wanted to hear it. There were times when they invited him, come, we want to hear what you got to say. But you know, I see Paul preaching when he's got stripes on his back, sitting in the bottom of a prison. I see Paul preaching, uh, DJ, when he's in a storm in a shipwreck. And he's steady going after it. I see Paul preaching when he's in court and they're, they're trying to get him hung. They're trying to get him executed. And what's he doing? Preaching the gospel. That's the picture of out of season. When they're all hating on you and they're all wanting to, they attacked him. If y'all remember, they attacked him in the temple. Do you know what he kept doing? He kept preaching the word. In season. And out of season. Share your faith when they're smiling. Share your faith when they slam the door in your face. Share your faith when the barber's interested in what you got to say. And share your faith when the guy sitting in the chair thinks you're a moron. This was in the same moment. It was in season with him and out of season with him. I wanted to spend my time with him and I wanted to choke him to death. But I know y'all more spiritual than I am. Y'all get the point? What's he telling? What's he telling Timothy? It's not always going to be peaches and cream. Son, it's going to be chicken one day and feathers the next. One day you're going to think this is the greatest thing in the world. One day you're going to think ministry is the greatest thing. You're the luckiest guy in the world. And one day you're going to want to drive off into the sunset and never turn around. But regardless of the atmosphere, preach the word. Preach it when they're smiling. Preach it when they're frowning. Preach the word. Preach it when it's legal. Preach it when it's illegal. But preach the word. Boy, I feel a little God on that right now. Amen. Amen. Preach the word. That's the win. When do we need to share? And by the way, let me say this. Always apply, always apply what we're studying to your particular situation. Don't read this and think, well, I'm not a preacher, so I haven't even worried about this. No, 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 no. Proclaim means the gospel means to share your faith. Okay. So, so this is including everybody. There's going to be times when it's going to be popular for you to share your faith. And then there's going to be times it's not. But regardless, do it anyway. Is everybody with me on that? I don't want to think nobody gets to check out of this part because you're not a preacher standing on a platform with a pulpit. No, we're all preachers. We're all proclaimers. We're all heralds of the gospel. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Okay, so that's the win. That's the win. But then look at, look at the what. Number two. Look at the what. We not only see the win in season, out of season, but then we see the what. He said, reprove, 
rebuke, and exhort. That's two negatives to one positive. I believe we can take from that, you got to take the good with the bad. You, you, you got to preach on grace and you got to preach on sin. You, you got to preach on rewards and you got to preach on judgment. You, you got you to you preach it all. And by the way, you can get out of balance. You can get so mean and nasty that you're just constantly critical and hellfire and brimstone every single minute, every single second. I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I, I've been under preachers that I, I think they think their spiritual gift was how mean they could be. And, and the more red, red they got in the face and the louder they hollered and the meaner they got, and that was the, that was the level of their spirituality. Well, that's... I better not do that in COVID. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I, this is weird, guys. I'm trying to get adjusted, okay? But then, but then you have the opposite extreme where it's all, hey, this is wonderful. God bless you and it's favor and grace and mercy and that's not right either. That's not right either. We have to have some reproof. Listen, if the preacher ain't stepping on your toes every now and then, you need to find a new one. But if he ain't encouraging you and lifting you up and blessing your socks off and helping you step another step and go another mile, then you need to get a new one. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. Exhort means to encourage. It means to... Edify, lift up. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. Man, we got to hurry. All right. The when, what was number two? What? Now number three, the how. The how. Watch what he says. He says, son, I want you to preach the word. That's the content. I want you to do it no matter what. If it's easy or if it's hard, if it's good time or a bad time. If it's a good atmosphere, a bad atmosphere. He said, I want you to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. I want you to uh, uh, preach it. Preach on sin and preach on grace. Preach on judgment and preach on mercy. But with all long suffering and doctrine. That's the how. And see, that gets out of balance too. I think this is something, this is something... I, I'm, I'm still working on, I'm still working on, uh, seasoned pastors, seasoned pastors seem to be better at this. It's been in a place a long time, but sometimes we got to realize we got to be patient with folks. We, we want, we want immediate results. I, I, and I'm, I'm the worst in the world at this. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I'm the worst in the world at this because I, I don't know about y'all, but I, 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 people, people talk about, well, just order it on Amazon. I don't want to order it on Amazon. I want to go get it. <laughs> I don't want to wait three days. I want to get it and go home. Say amen. amen. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I'm just, that's the, if I want something, I want it right then. Amen. And, and sometimes, sometimes when it comes to a spiritual level or, or, or maturity. We, we preach the word and then we, we expect the people, oh, now go do it. But Paul is saying, sometimes you got to be patient. Sometimes you got to be patient. Just because it doesn't seem like they're swinging from the chandeliers doesn't mean they're not getting it. And just because they don't run out and turn into the apostle Paul tomorrow, it doesn't mean we're not making progress. And I know y'all just sit and listen. I'm preaching to me right now. Because sometimes I can get impatient. I'll see a need. I'll see an area where we need to get better as a church and as a people. And man, I just, I just want it so bad. And just, just here we go. And I, I'm, I'm, 
Sometimes I'm like a bull in a china shop. And sometimes I need to apologize to you guys because I just I just see where we need to be. And 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 we got to realize and pardon the pun, but Rome was not built in a day. Amen. And sometimes we, we need to be patient. He says, preach with long suffering. Just switch that around. What does long suffering mean? It means to suffer. Long. Right. I mean, sometimes you got to be patient. patient. But he says long suffering and doctrine. I put the word here practical. Doctrine just means teaching. What is teaching? It's putting a, a, a set of information in a way that you can understand it. That's what doctrine is. It's a teaching, the teaching of the Holy Spirit, the teaching of God, the father, the teaching of the church, you know, the teaching, whatever it might be, whatever subject topic in the, in the Bible you want. That's the doctrine of the teaching of how many of y'all have had teachers uh, that no matter what the topic, they can make it easy to understand. How many of y'all had no matter how simple the topic, they could confuse a, a PhD graduate from Harvard. Y'all with me? Well, well, what he's saying here, he says, put the put the put it on a shelf where everybody can reach it. The, the, the people don't need to be impressed with how many degrees you have. They need to be able to understand what you say. And so be patient with them and be practical in your teaching. Make sure that you put it in a way that they can go do it. I, I was in a. I was, and if you're watching, don't take offense to this. Uh, I was in a DMD training with, with several pastors last Thursday. And, 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 and one, of the, one of the parts that we were looking at was the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I, I asked one of the guys, I said, okay, how would, you, how would you say this to your Timothy? And he said something that seemed like it came from a uh, uh, souped up save Shakespeare. I mean, it was just so eloquent. And so I'm like, I'm sitting there and he is just, and when it's done, I said, okay. Now, how many of your people in your congregation are going to talk like that? I said, in the simplest way, tell me what you just said. The Holy Spirit lives in you. I said, why didn't you say that the first time? Now, some of some of the guys was in here and you was in that meeting and, and he just kind of I said, you got to understand something. You're Timothy's. You're going to be leading brand new saved people and it's got to be reproducible. And the only way something is reproducible is if it's simple. Now, what you said was correct. But the 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 majority of the people that sitting under you, they're not going to understand a blessed thing. You just said. Does that make sense? Be practical. Be patient. That's the how. So we have the we have the when, we have the what, we have the how. Look what Warren Wearsby said. Preaching must be marked by three elements: conviction, warning, and appeal. Say that with me. Amen. To quote an old rule of preachers, he should afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Let me say that again. He should Afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. If there is conviction but no remedy, we add to people's burdens. Let me say that again. If there is conviction but no remedy, we add to people's burdens. And if we encourage those who ought to be rebuked, we are assisting them to sin. Oh, mercy. Biblical preaching must be. Y'all with me? We can't we can't preach so hard that we beat them down into the fibers of the carpet and don't tell them what to do about it. Right. I mean, I'm telling you, I've been in this kind of preaching. I've been in the kind of preaching where they, by the time they're through, you feel lower than a you're in a, a, a lower than a snake belly in a wagon track. And then he leaves you there. I wanted to say, well, I already knew I was there before I got in here. You just reinforced it. <laughs> what do I do about it? But then you have others that are. Just, it don't matter who you are, don't matter what you're doing. You could be shacking up, just doing whatever. Everything's all right. God loves you. God loves it. You, you, you can't, it's got to be balanced. 
I, <laughs> I was in a I was in a service one time and, and I was just I'm, I'm not even sure I surrendered to preach yet. So I was about 16 years old, 16 or 17 years old. And uh, and I went and I was sitting beside one of my, my preaching heroes and uh, mentors. And he was he was one that uh, <laughs> he, he was mean in a junkyard dog. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, when he preached, son, I'm, I, you thought he was mad at everybody. But I loved him. I mean, it was just he was he was a great preacher, could preach the Bible. He was he was just a little abrasive. Y'all with me? Say amen. And uh, I remember I was sitting beside him. I was sitting beside him out in the congregation and, and, and another preacher was standing and, and getting ready to preach. And uh, when 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 he stood and he read the text and he started praying. Well, I heard I heard uh, Brother Ruth was sitting there beside me and he was sitting and he started praying. And he said, oh, God, make it easy on the preacher and hard on us. I opened one eye and looked over there. Did you hear what he was asking? God touched that preacher. Let him say what he needs to say. Make it easy on him, but bring the conviction on us. And that's, that's, that's what this is saying. If, if, we, if we don't have balance, and I think that is the greatest, one of the greatest missing elements in the modern day church today. I do. I believe it. And if you ever go out of here, you ever go out of here and you visit places, you'll, you'll see that. You'll see that. So anyway, which you don't need to go nowhere. Just stay here. <clears throat> All right. Why is he saying this? Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, maybe we can get through point number two. Why, why is this so important? Why, why should we focus on the word and preach the word and the word only? The scriptures that will, will give you, uh, to help you to be perfect means complete furnish unto all good works. Why is it so important? Why was Paul so dogmatic about this and so enforcing this and driving this home with Timothy? He said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Read that first sentence with me. For the, time the time will come. I believe the time started in Timothy's day. But I truly believe we are living in the time he's talking about. Now watch how he describes this time. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound means healthy, healthy, right, clear, true doctrine. But after their own lust, their own desires, their own wants, their own uh, uh cravings, what they want to do, how they want to live. After their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now watch what's going to happen. There's not but a short step from an itching ear, an itching ear to watch. And they shall turn away there from the truth. Be careful, be careful when the people start getting itching ears. Because the very next step is to have rejecting ears. Y'all with me? Amen. The time will come when they will not endure. Endure means they're just not going to put up with it. They're not going to endure sound doctrine. In other words, when you say this is what the Bible said, well, we just don't want to. You, you hear people all the time use this phrase. Well, I feel. I don't feel. Feel like that's right. Well, your feelings are irrelevant. That's right. That's right. Are y'all with me? Yes. We don't base anything on our feelings. Well, I'm just going with my heart. Well, you're going to be tricked. Because your heart is wicked and it's deceitful. It'll trick you. It will lie to you. It will lead you down the wrong path. It will make you do things you should not do. Say amen. People say, just go with your heart. No, don't you do that. Don't you do that. Anyway. Anyway. Watch this. Watch this. It says they will not endure sound doctrine. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. But after their own what? Lust. Lust. In other words, 
I want what I want. I want what I want. I want to live the way I want to live. I want to do what I want to do. I want to behave like I want to behave. Now, you say, preacher, you're just too narrow minded. Let me tell you how narrow we need to be. That's about how narrow we need to be. Are y'all with me? What, what we do, what we do in this, in this, this, this particular this particular behavior is we want to we want to adjust right to wherever we are. Not adjust who we are to what right is. So what we want to do is change the Bible to be whatever we want it to be. And so they change it. They, they have all kind of different versions. They have all kind of different, uh, you know, things that, that it, a lot of different teachings, a gender friendly Bible. Uh, 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 I don't even want to go in. It makes me want to vomit. Listen, we cannot change the Bible to fit the way we want to live. But that's what's happening. So it's according to their, you got to see where this is going. It's not because they think the Bible is right or wrong. It's they have a particular decision they've made in the way they want to live. It's their lust, their desires. So that's more important. So we need to adjust religion to wherever we particularly, we happen to be. Does this make sense? And then what happens is this. They're way over here. And so what they began to do, we want to live this way. We want to behave this way. We want to act this way. And, and, and if we preach the truth, well, we're just not going to put up with your bigotry. You're just a hater. You're a right wing extremist. Now, before a right wing extremist is one that would fly into a tower. But now all you got to do to be a right wing extremist is to preach as one man and one woman. That's what marriage is. You know why? Because what's happened is, is they found they found some teachers that will tell them itching ears what they want to hear. And legitimize their sinful lifestyle. We, we, we just had a preacher come out and, and declare that abortion was biblical. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Endure means to put up with. It's no longer just leave us and let us be. No, no, we don't. We don't want you just to accept us. We want you to endorse us. Preach the word. Preach it when it's in season and preach it when it's out of season. Are y'all with me? Amen. The reason you need to preach the word because there's going to be a wholesale rejection of truth. A, that's A, by the way. Did I give you number two? No, no. The reason. The reason. Number one was the responsibility. Number two was the reason. The responsibility was to preach the word. The reason that we preached and teach the word is because there's going to be a rejection of truth. Verse three, and then look at verse three and four. It says, and they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away from, from, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So what, what happens? First, there's a rejection of truth and then there's an attraction to entertainers. There's an attraction to entertainers. People were never attracted to someone who tickles their ears until they rejected the truth. There was a time when people were attracted to truth. They wanted to know what was truth. But now the only truth, because you've had all of these, all of these liberal professors in colleges saying truth was, was, it was relative. You see, my truth may not be your truth. 
Well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Amen. There's right and then there's wrong. Amen. There's truth and then there's fiction. But see, we've created, we've, I say we have, this world has created a place and an atmosphere where your truth is whatever you decide for it to be. Well, I got news for you. It says thy word is truth. Amen. You can say anything y'all want to say, but if it don't line up with this, it's not true. Amen. Amen. Entertainers. I'm going to stop right there because this has a tendency to make me get carnal. We don't need entertainers. We don't need men to stand in platforms and pulpits and just make everybody feel good. We don't need motivational speakers in the pulpit. Go do that in the civic center. Ain't nothing wrong with motivational speakers. There's a place for that. But the pulpit in the house of God is not the place. We need preachers with a backbone. We need people who will take the Bible and preach the Bible, live the Bible. Are y'all with me? Amen. I'm not saying perfect. There ain't a perfect preacher on this planet. We all have so many flaws, it's terrible. But one thing we got to get right is the delivery of that book. Your delivery don't have to be perfect, but your content better be dead down the line. Are y'all with me? And I'll say this, sometimes we're not going to get that perfect. But the Holy Spirit will help us when we don't. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, we got, we got two points. So we have three, four, five, and I added one. I got it after I done printed y'all's out, so you'll just have to fill it in next week. And it's good too. It's good. Paul's going to recognize his help. Y'all are so negative. <laughs> That's right. It's Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, dude, week after. All right. All right. Well, if, if, if the politicians have their way, we're not going to get that neither. Watch what I do with my turkey. Hey, <laughs> man, you... All right, all right. Uh, uh, well, it's been a good night, hasn't it? Amen. I enjoyed it. Come out here with no microphone, had to run and get it. But see, that's just the devil. Hey, did y'all notice? Did y'all notice? Everybody look at me. We're almost done. We're almost done. See, I got one minute and 11 seconds. We're not even in red yet. Did anybody notice kind of the feeling right in the beginning? It was kind of like, ooh. You know, the devil's doing all he can. Even with, I don't have, I don't have any time, any other time, I guess maybe I am getting a little more patient. I don't know. But any other time I would be like bugged out if people wasn't here and, and, and I'm not, I'm telling you, I'm really not. I understand the COVID deal and let's be careful. I want you to be careful, man. If you can't be careful, stay home and watch it on the internet. Some of y'all might've got mad at me from Sunday. That's okay too. But listen, did you notice how the Holy Spirit just started moving? When we started preaching the word, yeah. atmosphere was kind of cold in the, in the beginning. It was kind of, you know, kind of, it was just kind of off. I don't know if y'all noticed that. I felt it. When I walked in, I felt it. I said, well, maybe it's because I forgot my mic, but it, no. Everybody's, all this is on our mind. All of y'all came in. All of y'all came in with all this on your mind and stressing over this and stressing over everything that's going on. And isn't it amazing how, but when we get together, and, and we start feeding on his word. How many of y'all would agree? How many and I'm not making this up. I'm telling you. How many of y'all would agree right now you feel better right now than when you came in? Amen. Isn't that great? Yes. Listen. Hey, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And listen, if you can't make it here, I understand. But don't miss it there. Get on that. My brother calls it the interweb. Amen. Get on that interweb. And watch it. Watch it. Stay connected one way. If that's all you can get, then get that. Amen. 
Get that. My dad, you say it this way. Get all you can and can all you get. Amen. Amen. 